Hey, what's up, everybody? It is Wednesday at 11.30 a.m. Eastern Time, which means it's time to do Threat Gen Red vs. Blue Let's Play. Uh, last week, we had a great episode with Alex Goodwin, who's a very seasoned player in the platform, uh, go through and play through and show his experience and answer some interesting questions uh, for some of the users and players of the platform. And this week, I wanted to kind of flip the script. We are going to be joined by Rob Brown, who is a cybersecurity practitioner. He migrated from the education space into SOC analyst role. Now he's working in the GRC side. He's got a couple years under his belt. He's got a couple cycles in the threat gen platform, but from, an end, from a user's perspective, from a game player's perspective, and from a practitioner's perspective coming into the platform, what kind of questions, what kind of points of confusion, what kind of areas can we leverage to learn how to be a better practitioner and frankly, kick butt at being a get better game player. So today, sit back, relax. There's going to be a lot of high engagement with chat. I'm super excited. Um, Rob's super excited. So if you got any questions, if you want to engage, drop the questions in chat. We'll be throwing them on stage as we go. Sit back, relax, and let's have a good time. All right. Welcome, Rob Brown. How are you, my friend? Hey, Jerry. Doing great. Doing great. Thank you. Love it. Love it. So, Rob, how 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 many times have you played Threat Gen Red versus Blue at this point? I've played as a blue team probably about eight to ten times. Okay. Red so you Yeah, about, go ahead. Red team, red how many? Team about twice. Okay. And each time as a blue team, I've lost. Mm -hmm. And as a red teamer, I, I won once. Okay. All right. Well, let's get you that blue team win on under your belt today. What do you say? Yeah, sounds good. Sounds good. All right. I love it. All right. So let's go ahead and bring the, the panel over here. This is Threat Gen Red versus Blue. If you're not familiar with it, you can go to threatgen.com and learn more about it. Uh, but we're going to dive right into it. Now, uh, just because of the, the way we're going to do it, I will be, I will be you know, smart hands for Rob. But, um, you know, Rob, as you have questions, Chad, as you have questions, um, definitely shoot them out there. But I will be taking uh, direction from Rob on the gameplay. Let me throw a little little hip hop music on here to give us a little ambiance, Rob, right? Uh, before And before we click in, I do want to say what's up to everybody in chat, Rob. I don't know if you can see the chat, but yep. uh, Carrie's here. Um, Tom Bishop's up in here. Niza Redman, good to see you, Niza. Uh, Jester4256, Melvin Cobbs, Lego Sec. Oh, the whole gang's all here. Gail Silence, Lorraine Frost over on LinkedIn. I see you. Uh, this is great. So we've got a great, great audience today all teamed up here. Lane H, I see what's going on. Um, Alex Goodwin, uh, the famous, uh, well, well, well known Alex Goodwin. So uh, we'll be getting some help from chat today as well, Rob. So let's just jump right into it. We'll do a single player as a blue team. Now, what map are you thinking, uh, Rob? I, you know, I, I think maybe Pipeline could be good. It's mid-size. It offers a lot of assets, a lot of areas, but it's challenging. Yeah, yeah. I, I noticed, um, like, the manufacturing plant, it seems like the environment may be a little smaller. Like you mm -hmm. said, the pipeline might be a medium-sized. And then the large oil and gas company is a much larger environment. Mm -hmm. that, that, that seems correct, right? Yeah. So as it stands right now, for those who do not know, the manufacturing plant, pipeline, and large oil and gas, they go from small, medium, and large. So they literally are stacked in, in kind of a logical order. ThreatGen is actually working on developing a couple more uh, environments to kind of mix it up, uh, like a healthcare environment where you have certain assets that you would see in a healthcare uh, space. But right now, all of these environments do have OTICS elements and you know, corporate IT infrastructure. So it's it's really about what kind of challenge do you want, right? The smaller environment's easier to secure, but it's it's faster for the red team to get to the critical assets. Uh, large oil and gas is a bear to uh, secure uh, effectively, but obviously there's a lot of noise for the red team to get confused in. But uh, I'll defer to you, Rob. Where, where do you want to go today? Let's, let's go with the pipeline. All right, one pipeline. So 
every time you start red versus blue, you do get this kind of splash screen that gives you a little bit of an um, understanding of the story. But then the most important part is this uh, paragraph at the bottom that identifies the win condition. So it's important to note that the game does teach you uh, more about how to be a practitioner and how certain terminology and key concepts and stuff. But it is a game also, so you want to achieve those wins. So we can eliminate all vulnerabilities, uh, which is the all clear win. And we can increase threat intelligence score to 100%, basically finding the threat actors and getting them arrested and out of our out of our life forever. And then we can weather the storm, uh, which is basically just surviving and uh, you know outlasting the red team. So let's get into it, Rob. Yeah, and, and Jerry, feel free to critique my decision making as well. And, All right, uh, will do, will do. And chat. Feel free to critique Rob's decision making too. It's 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 a live <laughs> roast on Rob. <laughs> All right, so Rob, uh, if if I may, uh, I'll go to the skill tree unless you have some thoughts on the network diagram here. Um, yeah, let's let's take a look at the skill tree. Okay, so here's the skill tree. These are all the um, here. Let me get rid of the uh, the banner too, so everybody can see what's what's actually going on here. So you can see in the skill tree. Um, or excuse me, at the top left, there's uh, $50,000. That's our budget, right? Because Rob's the CISO. And we have three junior analysts reporting to Rob. This is our threat intelligence score. Hopefully this goes up to 100 and we win. This is our PL. If that goes down, we lose. And these are the number of turns and, and time left to take a turn. So Rob, the world is your oyster. Where would you like to uh, invest your time and money well, and resources? Well, I... I, I... I think I can hear your voice in the back of my head saying, you know, if we don't know what we have in the environment, how are we going to protect it? Yep. So, so I've, I've, I eat pretty much each game I've started out. I've, I've done, let, let's do an asset inventory. All right. Solid, solid move. Solid move. Who doesn't like a good asset inventory? It's the first guy, NIST cybersecurity framework. It's literally step one. CIS controls. It's literally step one and two. So I'm with you hundred percent, Rob, all day. Um, should we what implement a sim? Like? You want to do a sim? We could do a sim. All right. Like when, so, you, oh, oh, when you choose the sim, that ends up opening up more options for the tree. Yes, that's exactly right. So it is um, scaffolded and staged. So you can't do, you know, endpoint detection if you don't have a sim, uh, which is kind of uh, correlates with um, real life. I mean, you can have EDRs without sims, but for you know, holistic, comprehensive information security, you would want a SIM so you can actually have a centralized dashboard uh, where everything's reporting in. What what else? You've got one more analyst. Um, the gateway firewall. So the gateway firewall, this is huge. So guys, really quick, if you see, this is the internet and this is our corporate infrastructure and there is nothing protecting anything. So uh, gateway firewall, let's throw some PAs right in there or Fortinet, whatever it is. Uh, and that'll show up next term. We still have one analyst, uh, Rob, because the gateway firewall costs zero resources. We inherited it from the previous CISO. Where do you, where do you want to go? You got 20 seconds, Rob. Uh, let's, let's, can you scroll down just a little bit? Let's yep. go. Ba, ba, ba. Back up. Ba, ba. How, oh, oh, how about vulnerability mapping? Vulnerability mapping. Let's do it. All right. So that should give us. Uh, some awareness of where our vulnerabilities are in the environment. I will say that vulnerability mapping is akin to saying like, oh, we have Windows machines in the environment. What Windows vulnerabilities are there versus a more involved vulnerability scan, which would be putting an appliance on the network and scanning against it. So a little bit cheaper, but a little less quality uh, on what you're finding. All right. So we've got our SIM installed, Rob, and we've got our firewall. You can see right here, this baby looks pretty. That's very nice. All right. Excellent. We've got two of our analysts still busting their hump right here. One on vulnerability mapping and two on asset inventory. So that's gonna, I mean, uh, two two more days on asset inventory. It's gonna take a minute. Yeah, let's head over to the tree. All right. Um, maybe, what do you, well, that takes two analysts. What do you think about What do you think about? So, I, 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 yeah, I'm always a fan of either video surveillance because you, you can kind of uh, get your arms around 
the phys the on-site physical security aspect or uh, log collection and analysis because um, you know you can put it on the firewall and start sending logs to the sim if your firewall is getting hammered by a threat actor out on the internet. Those, those yeah, are kind of the two areas here. I like to look. Let's you... let's 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 do that the the log collection analysis and, and maybe right. we'll go with. All right, so we'll do it on the firewall. Get a, get a vibe to see if we're getting getting hammered um, on the firewall there. Let's see how chat's doing over here. All right, so vuln hunting is nerfed without asset inventory. So, unfortunately, it look it sounds like this is a really good point. Uh, Alex Goodwin brings up. So in real life. Um, you might have an idea of what assets you have in your environment, kind of. Oh, we're a Windows shop. We're a Cisco shop. But without having the actual asset inventory done, by doing vulnerability mapping, we don't know what technologies we need to actually go look up. So um, the value of this vulnerability mapping is actually going to be nothing. Like, we will get no value when this thing resolves because we still... It will resolve before the asset inventory resolves. So... <clears throat> okay. It, so we, you know that's a and that's a that's a game mechanic and it's slightly uh mixed with reality so it's a good lesson learned rob yeah yeah thank you alex yeah oh yeah all right let's go ahead and end the turn here we go vulnerability mapping completed we did get some vulnerability uh map so uh i don't know if this is what alex was saying or if i got i was confused but the good news is we do have some visibility. You'll note, um, though, that some of the technologies, we got no vulnerabilities. Um, and that is because the vulnerability mapping gives you a little bit less of a thorough vulnerability um, mm -hmm. understanding. Now, so you've Jim, got two assets, Rob. Go ahead. You have Jerry, a question? Quick, quick question about the, uh, the, the the mechanics. If you go back to the to the network and, and if you hover on the bottom left, the share server. Yes. And, and see how it gives you the two options there, deploy USB security or endpoint detection? Yeah. Yes. Uh, is your recommendation to, to start like going through all of those and, and do what's suggested? Okay, so this is an interesting point. And this gets into a philosophical discussion of how you like to approach information security programs. So for me personally, when I play, I don't really do USB security. Um, in the game mechanic way, this is going to prevent a malicious USB drop and Carl, you know, plugging it in somewhere. But for me, the, the bang for your buck, it's just there's too many places to stick a USB in. Now, EDR, or endpoint detection, to me, I do like to do that because it's going to report in when a machine gets compromised, whether it's Carl plugging in a USB or a spear fish attempt or someone physically on site taking, taking advantage of it. So, you do get the visibility, you can then take action and respond. I do prioritize the engineering workstations first and the um, kind of the high value targets basically and then work my way over. Um, now, philosophically speaking, this is a flat network. So EDR is good because you'll know what's going on. But if you focus on segmenting your network, you can make it harder for them to move. Uh, kind of con con containerizing them and then right. start putting EDR in. So those are two different approaches, two different strategies. One is oh. more protection focused. One is more detection focused. Yeah, I've uh, I've played a couple of games where I've just <clears throat> done what was suggested and mm -hmm. you know went around the whole environment and I was like, all right, endpoints uh, protection. You know, just went around the whole. Yeah, you've got thirty-seven seconds, 30 seconds, Rob. Two right, assets. Let's, what? Let's, two two resources. What are you let's feeling? Do, let's. What, we want to seg segment the network. I'm a huge advocate of network segmentation. I, I, I'll, right. I'll I'll support you in that ten times out of ten. Now we've got some um, some power players in chat here. David E saying thinking that he has to do uh, we should do policies and procedures since there's no anti social engineering defense yet, and that's AI's favorite. So policies and procedures are right here. Two assets, three turns. Same as uh, segmenting network. We could change that, but we're about to run out of time. So let's say let's stick with that. And maybe the next round we'll go with for policies and procedures. All right. Policies All right. And procedures. All right. So Alex and David E, this is what's this is what happens when you, when you uh, deprioritize policies and procedures. I love this, Rob, because we're going to actually get to see uh, how how this plays out in a different way. Our asset inventory is complete. We unlock the skill tree, um, which is dope. Wait, where is it? Where's our skill tree? 
Oh, that isn't tied to a skill tree. I'm sorry. Um, our just our ability to do vulnerability assessment and stuff like that is now improved, which is good. All right, so we have one asset, three, three, um, one asset, and that asset, uh, two of our assets are contained for the next two turns. So you basically have one asset for two turns, Rob. How would okay. you like to? How would you like to spend it? Um, in in situations like these, do you try to utilize all your assets, or, or would, would you try to just? Oh my end your god! Turn? Oh, Rob, I am I am the I, I am the foremost advocate on a hundred percent resource utilization. It Each bothers turn. me if I can't use it. So okay. uh, definitely, definitely take advantage of this guy. But the thing is, like say you you uh don't want to commit the resource to like a two turn thing or a three turn thing you could just go ahead and do you know edr it's one person one turn right so you can there's a lot of like places where you can just kind of fill the gaps as needed and you may not get as much value or want to do it right now but it's spending the resources yeah let's fill one of those gaps such as that one maybe pop some endpoint protection on okay so the engineering workstation this is a good one this is another engineering workstation uh, we're trying to um, basically make sure if, if uh, social engineering happens right there um, on the engineering workstation, we're good to go. We have our one asset back. You can see our endpoint detection is here. Now, if you want, um, Rob, we could do endpoint detection on the other engineering workstation. Kind of a kind of a best practice. If you're going to do one, you should do both. It's kind of the the type of machine is what you're trying to address the risk of. Okay, that sounds good. All right. Now, I want to point out, Rob, that next turn, our network segmentation resolves. Now, from a game mechanic and as a CISO, you do want to be thinking strategically. You do want to have, you know, a three-year roadmap. Um, you know, what are we doing? What kind of budget do I need to ask for? What's the next six months look like from a resource utilization perspective? So having said all that, as next turn resolves, we will have three assets and $32,000. So it behooves us to take advantage of our time now to get a plan together. So you had mentioned policies and procedures, correct? Yes. Which will unlock this whole skill tree, which is pretty sick. So yeah. <clears throat> so we'll do that and then we'll have one asset remaining. Um, so we can do all sorts of things if we want. We can continue to do EDR, we can do log collection and analysis. Uh, we could do video surveillance if we want. Do you have any any preferences with what we might do with that one resource on the next turn? You know, I've never went with the uh, video surveillance. Why don't we give that a try? Okay, so next time we can do video surveillance. It's ten thousand dollars. Very expensive. You think okay. that would be? Um... I like video surveillance. Uh, we might be a little late in the game. It's turn five. Well, maybe it's not that late. It's turn five. The thing is, if you do the video surveillance, this is another thing to really consider. Policies and procedures are three turns, two people. Video surveillance is three turns, one person. So you'll effectively not have any actions or any game state changes for three full turns while the red team is just doing whatever the red team does. Thing. Yeah. So you got to be careful with that. I'm going to go ahead and end this. Uh, Fix of all, all right. So the the season players are talking about X risks and all this. Um, I was jealous of Alex Goodwin. He managed to get 102 percent utilization. The bug that caused that was fixed, which means I'll never be able to do it unless I find another bug. Okay, so Rob Lee, uh, Rob Lee. I'm sorry, Rob Lee. Rob Brown, you have just segmented the network. Nice. Winning, winning. Okay, so now you know we've compartmentalized this. Um, a bit we've got our three resources as we talked about um the anti-jerry fix yes of course okay so what do you want to do with our three assets um policies and procedures policies we definitely and procedures yep and now and we've Jerry, got one quick, of, yep in, in in the real world situation policies and procedures like if, if we're just starting a company and, and that should be done what in the first year first months um so that is a funny question because if you look at any academic uh, approach to information security policies and procedures are the first thing because you know based on the policy is how you choose technologies based on the policy is or pro you know process is how you implement things like is remote access allowed yes or no what's the policy say 
oh, it's allowed, but it has to be administered through IT and the standard says it's team viewer only. Okay, let's go ahead and implement that. But that isn't really, okay, so that's the academic thing, right? Mm -hmm. In real life, right? So in real life, when I'm a CISO and I get into a new place, multi-factor authentication, security awareness training, and uh, EDR or SIM. It, like these are the three things that like, I don't even need to know what your policies are. I don't need to know what our current state of anything is. These three things I need to prioritize because they're so important that it, a policy isn't gonna do anything. Now, a policy to me, even though it's supposed to be one of the first things, a policy to me is where if you put out the immediate fires and address the immediate thing, it's like you're building a house, Rob, and <clears throat> you're gonna live on the property. So the first thing you do is build like a tent or a makeshift shelter that you can live in today while you build your house over here. That mm -hmm. makeshift shelter is MFA and, and SIM and, and EDR and stuff like that. So you get that, then you build your foundation. And that's where you start doing policies and procedures. Now, um, really quick, Rob, since I, I flipped out about that, we are doing policies and procedures. I know you mentioned um, the, 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 uh, the, the, the video surveillance. If you want to do that, we could also put EDR on these, on these, ass, these critical assets as well. Um, your choice. Yeah, I'd say let's put EDR on the critical assets. Okay, so let's start. Um, let's start over here, with the terminal server, where they possibly could get in first, and then we'll just we'll rotate around the horn here. Um, and you can see our at you know our two guys are basically our our, our two ladies, um, whomever they are, are working diligently on policies and procedures. Okay, and then let's do uh, the database here. Actually, well, yeah, let's do the database. There could be an argument made, Rob. We are doing host-based endpoint detection, and we could be doing network-based log collection analysis, which is kind of like endpoint detection effectively. I know it's not an endpoint, but... Um, you know, if the if the threat actors in our environment right now and they're having to now pivot through the different environments since we segmented, um, the log collection analysis on the firewalls would actually notify us of where they are and what they're hitting versus uh, the EDR of the databases. But uh, it's it's your it, it, I'm not saying it's your choice. Yeah. Yeah. Let's, so anyways, um... yeah. Go ahead. I and yeah. just so you know, Alex Goodwin desperately wants us to put EDR on the SCADA PCS. Okay. All right. Next, next turn. I think we, uh, okay. Ran next out turn. Of yeah, we're good. We're... All right. Let's do it. Alex Goodwin for the win. Okay. Here we go. So this is the Alex Goodwin turn. Yeah. He's, there you go. He's... <coughs> Scout of PCS. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I love it. I love it. I love it. Okay. So now our just, you know, as I mentioned earlier, our, our resources are going to resolve policies and procedures. In fact, they are going to resolve next turn. So and, we will and, have three resources. We have two and a half minutes. So I, you know, I'd like to casually like Rob, you and I just went to the, uh, the retreat down in uh, Cabo and at the retreat, we're talking about, you know, 2023 plans. What are we doing? What initiatives are important? We've got two minutes left at the, uh, the Vista down at in Cabo. Let's look at our 2023 plan. How, how do you want to spend our three resources in the coming turn? Well, that's that's going to open up the um, unlock that whole middle field there. So maybe. Yeah, that's true. Multi-factor authentication. I love multi-factor authentication in the context of the game. It's going to uh, help defend against password attacks, improper access and social engineering attacks. Huge value, um, huge value for that. It is two people, three turns. So it does take a minute. Uh, perhaps we can continue this. Um... Yeah. What about um, one vulnerability I've seen that pops up often is is default passwords. To, yeah. Oh, yeah. I think I think enforce strong passwords is how we get rid of uh, default passwords. Mm -hmm. uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Chad, on that one. But I think enforce strong passwords addresses weak passwords and eliminates default passwords. Although you you may have to. Ad just address default passwords like with system hardening maybe hold on one second let me see uh, we definitely have a default password somewhere this one so j change default creds is an actual action that you have to take it's not um 
Yeah. So enforced strong passwords only eliminates the weak passwords, not the default ones. So we'll okay. have to make a decision there. Okay. Um... We, and also I want to point out, Rob, not to overwhelm you, but uh, in, in our 2023 plan, we should also think about uh, vulnerability assessments as well. Uh, Cause we did vulnerability mapping, but it didn't unlock, it, it didn't discover everything. So there mm -hmm. is, there is that. And we want to install network sensors as well. So this so probably MFA yeah, in, in the, in the sensors on the next, next turn. I okay. think the vulnerability assessment takes up two, two. Yeah. Two for three turns. And you'll want to, um, unfortunately you'll have to do, you'll want to do ICS, um, safe testing methods first before, um, or else you'll knock over, you potentially knock over a piece of, uh, operational technology and, and not, and send it offline. Which hey, is a Jared. real thing, which is a real thing in real life. Now, ICS. Yeah, industrial question. control systems. Oh, yeah, yeah, industrial so, control systems. so for those, for those uh, who may not know, you know, this left side of the map, the green and the purple and the red, this is more common what you'll see at most businesses, right? You've got your IT infrastructure, like your Active Directory, your email server. Then you have your user land, which is where, you know, Rob and I work like our workstations and stuff like that, finance, accounting, marketing, et cetera. Here's where people remote in and stuff like that. All, not all, but most businesses have this infrastructure. In, in, in a business that is manufacturing or oil and gas or even medical, um, they could have operational technology or industrial control systems, which are very specialized and do very specific things. They might vent gas into the air or they might uh, do some type of uh, chemical treatment or something like that. And they're very, very important systems and they operate over here on the right side. And as I mentioned, if you run a vulnerability scanner, those devices may not be uh, prepared to handle the interrogation of an, a vulnerability scanner and could knock it offline. Uh, a famous example that doesn't exactly map to operational technology is back in the 90s, it was really common for a vulnerability scanner to screw up HP printers and they would just spew out pages with a bunch of gobbledygook on it. So if you ever came in and there was a ton of papers on the ground, it meant that the security team ran a scanner. All right, so Rob, uh, we've got three people um and we are operating so wh what do we want to do you said mfa M yeah we'll go with the mfa and and now do you want to do um edr or um do i do log collection analysis on the on the firewalls what, what are you feeling um yeah let's collect some logs that's a i feel like we haven't really done much of that all right so um wh where do you want to go and a couple options no, right yeah we're which so here, so here, here's, here's your, here's your, here's your calculus to work with. This one's our got it, right? So your choices are these three firewalls. This firewall protects arguably your most sensitive network segment with operational technology. However, this firewall and this firewall are more likely to get touched first because if the threat actor's coming through remote access, they're going to have to go through these firewalls first, unless they're physically on site, which would be over here. If they okay. came through the fire, like personally, I would deprioritize this one because if they're coming through this way or this way, um, you know, it, this is the more interesting area. So the question is this one or this one is what I would argue. Let's, let's go with that one on the left. All right. That the DMZ. One. There we go. All right. So great choices. Great choices. Robert Moritz asks really quickly, is threat gen free to play or do they have a free or low cost version? Yeah, Robert. Um, you'll Clint, can you, uh, drop in chat and answer that? But, uh, essentially, essentially you can go to threatgen.com and sign up. It is low cost. It's a subscription based platform. You can purchase an, an eternal license, um, if you want, but that I would not consider that, you know, a, a freemium option, but Robert, if you go, go to threatgen.com and check it out and you'll see. Uh, what I'm talking about, and you can definitely get in here. There's actually a thriving community, Robert, on the Discord server of people looking to play each other. There is a um, heads-up version um, that you can play against. Quickly. Yeah. Okay. Hold on one second. Are you good with your camera on there, Rob? Yeah, yeah, I, I told... I, that's my wife. She, she wanted to play, Jerry. Okay. All right. Well, hey, you know what? Threat gen red versus blue is equal opportunity. Everyone's invited. You've got one asset uh, available for the next two turns, Rob. What, do you, what are you feeling? Where, where do you want to go? You want to do some log collection analysis? You want to look at the skill tree? 
Oh, okay. Um, hey, no, I'm sorry. While you're thinking about that, Robert, uh, Clint Bodungeon, who is the CEO of Threat Gen, has chimed in. It's $20 a month for the pro version or a $15 one time for the community version on Steam. I will tell you, Robert, the community version on Steam has less uh, features and functionality. You'd have to, if you go to threatgen.com, you'll see the, the kind of the crosswalk there. Um, and, you know, so there's that. Okay, Robert, wh where are you at? What are you thinking? Yeah, I'm thinking maybe that other firewall. All right, good call. No, Log collection. Yeah. Is that the one you want? Okay. Well, I was thinking that other one that you mentioned where the hacker could get this in guy? first. But yeah, it's all right. I don't know. Uh, Rob, it's your gameplay. I'm just smart hands. I'm just flapping my gums over here pretending to be a sisso. <laughs> jaw jacking it up? Yeah, I'm jaw jacking. You know what's up. I still got to go to Cabo. All right, let's go ahead and pass the turn. Our threat intel, it's also worth noting, our threat intel score is at 0%, meaning we haven't detected anything. But our PNL is still at 100%. So, you know, we have no indications of compromise, no data exfil going on. We've got one. Maybe, maybe um, let's fill in one of those gaps again. Um, okay, I think the this is the final firewall without a log collection and analysis on it. All right. Yeah. Why don't we? Why don't we do that? All right. All right. Now, our uh, all three asset or all three of our resources will be available next turn. So if, if, if it's okay with you, Rob, I'd like to just take a minute and kind of think through what you might want to do next turn. Uh, and just to set the room for everybody, we have log collection and analysis on all the firewalls with the sim. So if there's lateral movement, we should be able to detect it if it tries to jump zones in our network segments. We have some EDR on critical assets, like the engineering workstations in the SCADA PCS and the terminal server. We could harden this, that's a problem. We do not have EDR on this database, um, which is a gap, I would argue, and we have done really nothing for our IT infrastructure or end user land. Now, having said all that, Rob, next turn you're gonna have three resources and $24,000. What are you thinking? Um, well, Jerry, you mentioned the top right there is some of the more critical assets. Mm -hmm. And in I, I, ICS environment, are those, engineering uh, devices and whatnot in the top right, would they be considered more critical than, you know, down in the, the bottom left? So the answer is yes. And, and I didn't, I worked in manufacturing, but I, you know, this is, um, has come, this has been educated upon me by Clint, who's kind of a, a, one of the foremost experts in the ICS space, in addition to being the CEO of the company. And the engineering workstations basically can control and manipulate the, the physical aspects of the operational technology, including blowing them up, causing, you know, chemical leaks, uh, nuclear meltdowns, etc. So they are they're super critical from a like a human safety perspective, whereas Active Directory controls authentication, all your company resources. Um, but I would argue if AD goes down, yeah, you're, it sucks. And maybe you have to rebuild and you're down some days and maybe you lose money. But if engineering workstation gets compromised and something blows up, um, you've got a much, I mean, you have deaths potentially on your hand. Okay. So what, what do you think about maybe protect some of the resources in the bottom, bottom left, such as the DC server and. Okay. You want to go down here? Okay. Let's do that. Uh, we could do EDR on the um and we could we could we could either protect oh shit. Uh, well oh actually no this is fine this is fine because yeah, okay. um that, that's why we do the planning sessions that's why we go to these retreats rob all right so we got our 2fa we got our 2fa and we're looking pretty good i just want to show everybody our 2fa is in um we probably should do a, a vul vulnerability scan we could do that i would just encourage you to um do, 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 do safe testing first so you don't knock over a piece of OT. Okay, okay. Good good suggestion. Let's let's do that. All right, so we'll do that, which means we'll have to wait two turns before we can do our vulnerability assessment. T technically, we could activate it next turn so it resolves after. But um, what else would you like to do? Um, we could harden the RDP. Looks like some of our... I'm, I'm almost going to consider David E. and Alex Goodwin our external consultants, right? Like we hired them um they're from a you know a big four uh firm 
and they, they're coming in and helping us with our uh, with our approach to securing our assets, which is not an uncommon practice, by the way. It's very, mm. very common to hire um, one of these professional services companies to come in, look at your situation, give you an assessment, um, and then you know, kind of a roadmap. Uh, so, anyways, they are suggesting um, Harden RDP as a potential option. Um, I think that's what they're all they're asking for right now is the hard. Yeah, RDP. actually, let's 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 go for it. Carrie okay. wanted to see us blow something up. Well, we're the we're the good guys. We're defending. <laughs> Come on. All right. Um, we got one more resource. Um, we got one more resource. What are you What are you feeling? What's what, the, you, what about the uh, this that server on the top, uh, the desktop on the top top left? What's what is the, this guy? The, the the one with the shield. Oh, okay, it has no antivirus. Let's give it nope. some antivirus. Solid move. Solid move. I like it. Okay. Let's continue. Okay. What? Oh, oh. <laughs> David E is saying he's definitely asking for security awareness training uh, because he doesn't trust Carl. Where's my Carl sound? Oh! There we go. <laughs> All right, hey, we got ten thousand dollar bonus, Rob, for doing a good job. We kick butt. Nice job, Rob. Oh, great, thank you. And and Jerry, for, for, I guess the game mechanics wise, as as you're playing, they realize that you're you're doing well as protecting the environment. They're like, hey, mm -hmm. here you go. Here's an extra ten thousand. Yep. Yep. Okay. Yeah, if you do certain things, so I think it's the 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 pro players in here will know what's up, but I think it's. Uh, network segmentation, remediate a vulnerability, and MFA. I think those are the three. Or install the sim. It's 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 a combination of like a different you know different progressions. Okay. All right. A lot of people. Lorraine Frost is is asking about training. Um, so let's just look at how much the training would cost us. Two people, two turns, twenty five hundred bucks. We have one person, yeah. and. Well, uh, They'll be available next turn, though, so we could do it next turn. Yeah, well, well that's that's a great suggestion. I'd say let next turn. Let's do that. Um, All right. Well, what do you want to do this turn? In the meantime, can can we go to the tree real quick? Yeah. Can be a little overwhelming, right? Yeah, I feel like enforce strong passwords. Do you think that might be worth it? Yeah, definitely. That'll eliminate all the weak passwords in the environment, so I could get down with that. Let's go for it. All right, it. let's do it. Cool. All right. Now, I do want to point out another constraint that you know we deal with in real life um, as as CISOs. Um, we are talking about doing security awareness next turn. Two people, two turns. Vulnerability assessment is two people, three turns. We only have three resources, so we will not be able to do both of these in, uh, simultaneously. We'll have to uh, stage them in serial. So, uh, anyways, hey, let's have the turn. Yes. In, in the middle, do you see the middle two devices? Yeah, these two? Yep. Yeah, in the beginning of the game, they weren't there. Yeah, so these are remote workers. That's why okay. they're in the cloud and their laptops. Think of these as like sales engineers. And when they're when the laptop disappears, it's, it's essentially like they closed the laptop or they got on a plane or you know they're at sleep. When you know when when you leave work for the day and your computer's on your desk, it's still on your desk connected to the network, assuming you don't turn it off. Mm -hmm. With these okay. laptops, okay. Uh, that's why they come and go. All right, Rob. Rob right, Brown, so we, we've got three yeah, resources. We're, let's let's get that training on. All right, looks like we've got PNL loss here too. So um, good to good to see that, um, or an indicator of compromise, no doubt. We're gonna go ahead and do security awareness training. Yep. We have one asset left. Um, David E, our consultant, is suggesting that potentially our um, one of our devices is compromised of value. So, um, now how does I, David, e, like, where, how does he gather that Intel? What, what made him, what do you think made him? So David E saying here, the PNL is down and not a little. So 
David E has played this game a lot of times. So you can see at the top here, the PL went down almost yeah. halfway on the green. So okay. the amount of you know, the amount of impact, the amount of loss of revenue for the organization is consistent with the amount of kind of impact you're getting. So if a end user workstation, Carl's workstation gets compromised and you're exfilling data from Carl's workstation, all you're really doing is getting Carl's like, you know, vacation pics and maybe some email he sent, right? But not really anything super valuable. If you jump on the DC server, the shared my fi file server, um, the email server, the SCADA, like these high value assets and you're exfilling from there, well, then the data that the threat actor is getting is way more valuable and impactful to you. So that's why he's suggesting that it's a higher value resource because the um, P&L went down to a, a great degree. And, so he said he, he is suspecting it's the AD server, which I'm I'm prone to listen to my consultants. So what do you want to do? We can at, the, at this point, would it be worth if, if it has been compromised, would it be worth adding additional resources to that device? If it were me, I would put EDR on it at this point. By hardening okay. it, if it's already compromised, threat actors probably got persistence on it and they're gonna be able yeah. to get back in and All the right. hardening's not gonna do anything. Right. Yeah, so we'll EDR. put EDR in, which should notify us if, um, if there is an active compromise on it, hopefully. Let's go ahead and pass the turn. The good news is if they're in our IT infrastructure, that means they're not over in our OT infrastructure and you know they're not gonna blow us up. Let's look at our action queue. Uh, we were able to install EDR on the DC server. Let's go ahead and look around our, this database right here doesn't have EDR, another high value asset it is a database. So I would, I would suggest EDR here as well, just to kind of cover our bases. Suggestion taken. All right. So we're going to go ahead and queue that up. We're on turn 15. Uh, David, he says it could be an end user workstation. A lot of those games were before PL values increase. All right. Well, whatever. It's still a good practice to have EDR on there. See, we have maximum defenses against social engineering. Nice job, Rob. Nice job, Excellent. Rob. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you, guys. All right. So, hey, we just put EDR Ooh. on this machine, and it was, in fact, compromised. So this is what our EDR is telling us. So now we're feeling good. Um, we have three resources. And, Rob, this is going to – and for guys in chat, this is going to start getting a little bit into the game mechanics on the way things resolve. So just be mindful of that. But uh, the question is, Rob, do you want to activate incident response and get this uh, issue remedied? No. Yeah. Yeah, I, um, and I'll, I'll just, well, yeah, what are your initial thoughts, well, Rob? Well, in, in previous games, that was always the first thing that I would do is activate the IR and clean up the resource. Um, now, leaving it there, do they have the possibility to do any sort of lateral movement? Oh, yeah, P possibly. They are, they are in this box. We know it. Uh, they would have to go through the firewalls to get, you know, to get there. Uh, we don't know if these firewalls have default creds enabled because we've only done a partial vulnerability mapping. Um, mm -hmm. But this is a high, I, I would say this is a high value target, um, you know, for the I, data yeah. exfil and stuff. So we I'd imagine we, if it's a high value target, should we activate the IR and clean it up? Yeah, I, I think we should. Now, just from a game mechanic perspective, we have three resources. If we do any actions that require one turn. They will resolve before the IR activates, which is a game mechanic, but we should do it. Okay. Mm -hmm. So let's find a bunch of one turn things and knock them out if we can. Okay. You can do um, strong Wi Fi. You can do. Um, Create data cha backups. Cha change default creds. Uh, oh, we yeah, can change install change NIDs. Yeah, let's do that. All right. So we only have it in the one place. We can also do. Um, some patches. patches yeah let's yes. do that okay on the on that server and then we got one more thing here um um okay on the dmz wireless all right so we're hearing here uh pcs nids dmz nids to catch that lateral movement so let's look at that really quickly we'll, we'll take that guidance so it, we could stick it in the dmz uh, Rob, or we could stick it over here if we want. What are you thinking? The, the DMZ. Okay, let's do that. And then let's activate IR. 
Now you can see, because it is a Q, you know, this is gonna resolve, then this, then this, and then IR will be activated. Again, it's, it's a game mechanic, but we wanna do 100% uh, resource utilization. All right, activate IR. We're on, Rob. All right. We, Rob, we have ransomware. Ooh. We have, we have ransomware in the environment. This is not good, but we have activated IR, so we can take care of this. Okay. Um, when you're in incident response, you have a different set of uh, actions to play, right? So down here in the incident response um, field, you could see these options. While we're in IR, this is all we can do, and when we're out of IR. Uh, we have the bigger skill tree. So since we're just going to deal with this particular impacted asset, Rob, what would you like to do? We can disconnect it from the network so we could do forensics. We could yep. replace it for $5,000, which is just straight clean. Uh, we could clean the asset, although it, it was made clear to me that cleaning it is actually not great because it the, it'll just get the guy out of there, but the box will still be ransomware. So mm -hmm. um, it's not a good option on that. So, what was the other? So yeah, you, you, I would gather say your best choices are replace. you could disconnect it and gather forensics if that's your bag, or you could replace it, which is the fastest way, so you get get back to uh, work. Right. I, I I've in the past I've always just went with replacing it. Okay. But I had a question with gathering forensics. Yes. Go ahead. Will threat gen at, at any point if give you any forensics on any any devices that you've decided to collect so you like the concept of gathering forensics um allows you to understand indicators of compromise and stuff and be able to detect a little bit better but the real impact is that your threat intelligence score goes up you start to see the ttps you start to understand oh it is you know vice society ransomware group and they're operating out of here like okay that and which which goes towards that threat intelligence score win condition okay yeah I'd right say so you want to replace the asset or do you want yeah, to what do you, what, what do you think that's that's what i've done in the past yeah i i like replacing the asset especially because this is a high value target um right. with you know with you know it's not carl's laptop right so carl's laptop i just leave it ransomware because then he can't use it right and <laughs> it's better for us all right so let's replace the asset and then deactivate ir again this is a bit of a game mechanic because the replacement is going to take effect and then we'll deactivate IR. So next turn, we can actually get back to work right away instead of seeing if it resolves and then um, and then deactivating IR, essentially wasting a whole turn. Uh, yeah, David so David, straight yeah, David, A. Here, let me see this really quickly. David E is saying his idea would be to go straight replace or trade money for PL by queuing clean forensics this turn and replace next turn. I agree. I, I like the... Um, I like the clean the replace right now, especially since we have the money to do it. Mm. Um, but I want to say what's up to Leighton Kennedy. La La uh, oh crap! Did I I did I did hit deactivate IR, didn't I? Okay, so I asset replaced and IR uh, deactivated. So way to go, thumb thumbs up. Um, Incident response. Yes, nice Rob. Nice job. Nailed it. Nailed it. Okay, so let's get back to work. Obviously, the threat actor is interested in this asset. Um, so that's a problem. We have three resources. We've got lots of opportunity here. Um, yeah, what, what, Jerry, what you... I'd say if um, let's let's do, maybe do some. E well, all right. Well, do you do you think a vulnerability ass assessment is necessary at this time? Yeah, I definitely would. So we can start picking off the low hanging fruit. Um, it's a good call. So we'll. We'll do vulnerability assessment. That way we can find where, you know, things don't have antivirus, for example, or default creds and go with that. So that's going to take two turns to resolve. We do have one. We have one turn, one person for a couple turns here. We can uh, implement strong Wi-Fi. Um, they were here in the PMZ database. So um, I don't know if they did spear phishing or if they came on site. Uh, it, it's difficult for me to know. Okay. Um, but if they're on site, you know, they can they can get to the wireless from the parking lot. Right, right. I'd say um, let's continue to, you know, fill in one of the gaps with one of those critical devices. Okay. All right. So let's take a look here. Um, 
These devices all have uh, what they need. This is all good. This is all good. Um, now our domain controller, we could do system hardening or we could start putting EDR on the mail server and the file server. Those, those are options. Yeah, why don't we do that? We feel like we've abandoned those guys. Yeah, the IT infrastructure. All right, so um, I don't know how it does it in the context of the game, but to me, I would prioritize um, the mail server only, only because <clears throat> email, everybody knows email, but email is such a critical um, business function. People use it all the time, every like every day, all the time. Uh, it's super important to know what's going on. Um, the file server is also important, but I would prioritize that. But what what, right. what do you want to do? Yeah, that's that's that sounds like a good good idea. All right, so we'll put EDR on that. Pass the turn. All um, right, so Alex Goodwin's saying uh, prior towards AV volumes. David E is asking, uh, suggesting we go for budget. We could request a budget. It takes three turns, which is a while, and we are getting low on the cash. Sheesh. What do you think? Do you want to go for budget now, Rob, or do you want to keep patching things? Uh, you know, what? I've never requested additional budgeting. Oh, oh, it feels good when you get it. Yeah, well, do it? Let's, let's do it. Yeah, let's let, let's wash ourselves here. Let, let's do this. Let's request budget. Do I have a money one? Yeah. Great cash, homie. There we go. All right, so we've got man, our man. assets. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and pass the turn. And how much budget will they... Um... It depends. Again. I think fifty grand, which is you know pretty solid. Okay. Who doesn't like fifty thousand, right? All right. So our our resources are fully booked up right now, so we can't do anything. So let's just pass the turn and hope. Okay. Hope is really not a strategy for information security. All right, here we go. Next level security, Rob nailed it. Vulnerability assessment completed. Love it. Now we have full visibility and our um, budget request could resolve next turn. So let's start looking at our critical assets. This uh, DMZ server, which is pretty important, is has got patches missing. This has got patches missing. Um, yeah. the, the gateway firewall has default creds on it. Now, normally I would prioritize that if I were you, but um, the threat actors have demonstrated that they're, they are you know attacking these type of things. So you let me know y your well, choice. No. Jerry, what, what, what would you think as far as order of prioritization? Get the default, take care of the default creds, uh, patching, harden the system. Uh, yeah, yeah, well, in the, the context in the context of the game, I would start hardening these assets right here. But in real life, I would probably change the default. Like the default creds on a gateway firewall is insane. That is, that. I mean, th like... If the gateway firewall had default creds, it would have been popped within six hours of being deployed. I, like, no question. The way that in real life, the way that threat actors have auto scans, checking everything, checking all the doorknobs everywhere on the internet, um, th this thing would have been popped instantly. But, you know, that's not the context of the game. Well, let's 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 treat it like a real deal s situation. OK, um, yeah, maybe. Take care of the default creds. Okay. We got a couple. We got a couple turns here, and then maybe harden the system. You all right? So you want to focus all efforts on the uh, gateway firewall right now? Yeah, we're on this on this turn. Okay. All right. Let's go ahead and pass the turn. Give me one second, Rob. Um, tell us, like, I guess how, how is how is this experience of playthrough uh, different than what you've been experiencing before? I'm kind of curious. I have to go open the door for my dogs too. <laughs> But please, please answer the question for Chad. I'd be curious. Yeah, I'd say um, the, the way I've been playing this game in the past is is I would have, you know, one of the frameworks open, um, such as the CIS controls. And like Jerry always says, you know, left of the boom is identify and protect. So I would, as I'm playing the game, I'd keep those controls open mm -hmm. and try to do the whole identify and protect while looking at a framework and and um, and playing the game at the same time. Yeah, that, I mean, that's a really solid approach. I will say um, that it's worth noting, okay, that when you are implementing this cybersecurity framework, you are not, you're not expected to, nor should you 
um, treat it the way that CIS 18 is implemented, where it's chronological. Like you don't have to get all the identify done before you do protect. And you don't have to do all identify and protect done before you start looking at detect, respond, recover. I would argue that you should start identify and protect, right? Obviously start hardening. And then you start bringing detect online and then really respond and recover. Uh, you get to eventually, uh, at mm -hmm. least in my experience. Okay. That, that's Rob, a good, good yeah, you just nailed it, my friend. Straight, straight cash, straight homie. Cash. Straight cash, homie. Love it. Look at us riding in Fat City with fifty-five grand in our pocket. Um, so we've got two resources. Um, our um, our professional services consultants are suggesting um, missing antivirus. Let's see if there's any assets in our environment. Uh, this one asset is missing antivirus, um, yeah. which 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 is our NIDS device. So. I mean, that's cool, but I would make this a, this is a security tool, but it's, I'm more interested, or I would think <clears throat> there's higher risk uh, assets, honestly, uh, simply because, you know, the threat actors aren't going to compromise the NIDs. Okay. And you know what I mean? Like, like it just, you know, they may want to do it to hide, but our, we have EDR all over the place. So we, yeah, we would EDR detect them anyways. Maybe harden some, harden some machines. <clears throat> yeah. So this is update antivirus and you can see our two engineering workstations have old antivirus which isn't great uh the dc and the mail server also um have um outdated antivirus i think that would be a priority um we also have system patches system hardening for the for the um databases here yeah i'd say let's 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 do some system hardening all right so Let's see where the hardening is. There we go. Oops. Well, I accidentally clicked the wrong thing. No USB security for you. So uh, let me see. You want to do system hardening where we can? Yeah. Yep. Yep. All right. So Alex Goodwin is uh, losing his mind. Uh, he wants us to like fix the X risk AV volans unless you want them spearfished. He's talking about um, these right here. These two engineering workstations, basically, his concern is that um, end user who sits at that workstation gets spearfished, and mm -hmm. all of a sudden, you know that that box is is owned because antivirus doesn't detect it and quarantine the uh, the malware payload. Now, from the game perspective, what would help protect that? Did, did, didn't we do system uh, security awareness training with something like that? We, we did, which would reduce the chances of the spearfish hitting, uh, but but not, you know, eliminate the, the chance. Right, okay. So what do you want to do? We can do patches or antivirus? Antivirus. All right, there we go. All right. <clears throat> Alex Goodwin is happy that he wrote that report and delivered it to us. As, as all professional services people do, they, they, that's always the deliverable. All right, our system is wicked hard. Our antivirus is super updated. You say wicked, Rob. Pe all people don't know this. Yeah, Rob's also from the Boston area, so he's he's my brother. Um, all right. Dave, David E is say, saying EW. Engineering workstation. These two these two systems right here. Um, okay. He wants us to harden. So yeah, let's, let's by, by hardening, me, like, you know, do all the things, basically. What what, what do you want to do? You want to yeah, let's, wanna... let's let's do let's take David's suggestion. Let's okay. them up. All right. So we're we're basically working on these. We're basically working on these. I agree. I agree right now. Alex Goodwin mentioning that security awareness training is a dang useful control it absolutely is like i said earlier before i when i get into a new environment i don't care what's going on who's where who what the pecking order is what tools we have in place i begin an instant uh security awareness program and and i start hammering it into people uh because i i ultimately want to reduce risk but also i want people to know who i am and what i do that way when they detect something oh a chrome extension malware Ugh, what is this like they they can be like i'll call jerry and find out and then you know i got like basically security champions in my environment pro tip the more you know okay all right rob i gotta tell you man the pnl is going up which is good that means we've uh you know we've put the uh the salve on the wound yeah. i'd say uh, let's we... let's continue down this path okay 
We're, we're hardening all the things. Yeah. All right. So I mean, we're we're basically cleaning up the the this kind of L shaped thing right here. All right. So uh, David's saying that uh, he wants to make sure that we're focusing on antivirus. Red would probably trip the DMC firewall law collection analysis before being able to use other vectors. Okay. Where's our antivirus issues? Couple places, but not not too bad. Not too bad. I'm just looking really quickly for everybody's sake. So the DMZ NIDS is one place, and updating AV is um, the domain controller in the email server. So, mm -hmm. all right. Good, good talk, everybody. We're playing Threat Gen Red versus Blue. You can get more information at threatgen.com. You got two people um available uh for this turn rob and then next turn you'll have all three uh, if you uh you know do one turn things um what do you say some of those uh users devices up in the top right top right over here top, top left rather sorry okay yeah so we have no visibility really into this environment um we could do EDR. We could do anti update antivirus. We could do update system hardening. Okay. There you go. And one other, uh, we have the ability to do one more thing. We could do EDR or we could do system hardening. Or we could do patches on the terminal server. Maybe patches on the terminal server. Yeah, I feel like that's a good move. All right, so we're continuing. We're, we've, we've, we've done some good work over here um, in the... OT area. You can see another thing that ThreatGen does that's kind of consistent with reality is um, there are vulnerabilities here. CVEs have been released on these vulnerabilities, but the vendor has yet to make a patch available, so we can't ever, uh, do anything. All right. Let's see. All right, Rob. Again, you're you're killing it. PNL is up to an all-time high. Um, you're looking good for that bonus at the end of the year, Rob. We are in November. <laughs> I'd say so, keep keep it rocking. Keep okay. It, 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 unless you've got another suggestion from the, no, um, no. Th I mean, this is the job. Rinse and repeat. Rinse and repeat. Right, yeah, yeah. Keep 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 it rocking. All right, so do you want to focus on our end users over here or do you want to um, focus on IT infrastructure or the D I mean the basically you've kind of hardened a lot of the stuff over here minus um, the Wi-Fi and stuff so it's kind of the IT infrastructure yeah. or the uh, I the um, go ahead say the end users let's give them a little love okay all right do you want to do EDR do you want to like detect if there's problems there or do you want to stop problems from showing up oh I'd, I'd like to stop some problems. Okay, so let's do hardening and hardening. Okay, so these are going to take two turns. Alex Goodwin's talking about VPN potentially. Um, but, you know, we're, we're executing on... We're I do like that we're giving the end users some love. Um, hardening their systems, probably making it more difficult for them to use their computers. Uh, but ultimately protecting themselves from themselves. Those are going to take two turns, uh, or you've got two assets locked in for one more turn, Rob. So we can continue to work on the end users uh, with doing EDR if we'd like to do that. Yeah, let's give them a little EDR. Yep, yep. Okay. There we go. Keep on these guys. Carrie's talking about working on stopping the problem. <laughs> if Carl's under the end users. All right, you've got three full assets available, $55,000 basically. And you know, world's Jerry, your oyster. Go ahead, Jerry. You want you want to get jiggy with it? Yeah, man. Let's do it. What, 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 should, what, do, you, what do you think about a pen test? Whoa. Okay. I don't think I've ever uh, executed a pen test. Very expensive, but let's do it. Let's do. I've never done it either. I I figured we got we had we had the cash. So man, we, we're live on stream. Let's let's go. Now, a pen test that identifies vuln, zero days, increases the chance of budget requests, which is always nice. Some environments, such as ICS, can suffer adverse effects from traditional pen testing methods without proper precautions, ICS safe testing. A vulnerability assessment is required prior to pen testing. Okay. Now, we have done ICS safe testing, so we're good. Uh, we've got one asset available, 
And we're about to call in the hooded hacking people. I love it, Rob. I love it. Yeah. That's one good thing I, I like about the game. They, they do give a de description on each of the moves you can make. Yeah. Um, and there's also somewhere there's a glossary. Yep. There's a wiki. Which is yeah. Super helpful. Um, so let's what, may, what maybe. What do you want to do with your one asset? Maybe the, the, the bottom left. And it, this one? Yeah, let's say the, uh, the the DC server. Oh, the DC server, yep. Yeah. Antivirus, uh, fix that yeah, up. Antivirus, yeah. yeah I yeah. like it. Okay, let's go ahead and pass the turn. And since we're doing a pen test, you know what I got to put on, Rob? You got you got the shades? No, I, I can't put the full shades on, but I can I can go full, you know, a hacker. There we go. Yes. Nice. Yes. Okay. Red team unite. All right. So that's going to take two turns to uh, resolve or three turns, excuse me. So we've got one resource for a couple turns. What are you feeling, Rob? Um. Yeah. Continue down with the resource in the bottom bottom left there. This guy? Jerry, yeah. Yeah. That sounds good. I think even the music has changed since we implemented the pen test. It's kind of like. Yeah. It's a little, it's a little more edgy, isn't it? Yeah. All right, let's go. I can't wait for the pen test. They're in our environment right now. Kerber roasting all over the place. LLMNR. Okay. How many turns did that take? Three? Three, yeah. So they'll resolve next turn. Okay. We got nothing to do this turn except go go um, hit up happy hour, right? San Diego, 1230. Go get happy <laughs> hour. They somehow started hours before happy hour should. That's left coast life, right, Rob? Yeah, half, half off tacos. Oh my God. I would just eat double. I love tacos. All right, let's check it out. Pen test completed. Cybersecurity white hat. Nice, man. All aspects of vulnerability assessment at least once. Don't get complacent, though. What did the pen test find? Ooh. Let's see what we got here. Zero day, zero day, no patch available. Yay. Um,. Weak password. Weak password. Didn't we do strong passwords? Yeah, we did that. So that how's that up? How do we have? That's weird. Maybe maybe the pen test found the weak password. Mm, yep. And uh, a bunch of no patches available. Engineering workstation. Weak password. So I guess Rob, maybe in the context of the game and, and game players, um, let us know. Yeah. What. Is uh when you use a pen test and discover it, are you supposed to have to do enforce strong passwords again? Is that a temporal state? The enforce strong passwords? Let me know in chat. But Rob, you got three people in two minutes to decide how to spend them. Now that we got jiggy with it, I can pull up the action tree, or yeah, you can give a general approach. I'd say let's get the action tree and see what needs to be patched. All right, I like that. Now that I'm no longer hacker hoodie here, let's see what has to be patched. Well, I guess first, if I if I may, let's look for a missing AV. That 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 one thing right there. Okay, so that nothing new there. And you said patched, so let's look at patches. Oh, there's a couple choices, Rob. There's a couple choices. <laughs> yeah, just throw a dot, right? Yes. Um, I'd say. Ooh. Let's Interesting. go with the, um, the guys in the bottom right. The guys in the bottom right? Okay. Now, we can't patch those yet because um, in the world of OT, you have to get vendor certified. Um, oh. And this is a real thing. If you guys didn't know this, like, if this is like some, you know, Rockwell encabulator, and I'm an IT guy. If I go touch this thing, I could probably mess it up a lot. Oh, wait. Hey, you got to make a decision. You got 30 seconds. All right. Let's go up to the top top right. Okay. Patch, yep. patch, patch them the up. things. All right. All right. Great. Thank you. Yeah. We got one. Oh, wait. They're all taken. Okay. Yeah. Anyways, I was saying the Rockwell encabulator. If you touch this thing, uh, you could break it. So a lot of actual vendors will require you to hire them. They'll sell it to you, and then you're required to sign up with them, and they do your maintenance for you annually. Which seems like a racket to me, but it is what it is. 
Okay. Continuing on. Uh, we've got three resources. We're doing... Rob, you're doing great, by the way, my friend. Um, what, what do you want to do? We can uh, we can look around at assets. We can go to the skill tree. Yeah, let's go to the skill tree again. Okay. Um, network traffic. So these are more of your protection mechanisms, right? VPNing for remote users. Um, you could redo the strong passwords. Um, you could do strong Wi-Fi. Um, you could also do detection stuff, so EDR and NIDs. Uh, David E mentioned if you do ICS NIDs, you will get an extra uh, staff member, so you'll get a fourth resource, which is kind of cool. All right, yeah, that's that's a that's a good idea. Yeah, I would take one of those. <laughs> we could use the help, right, Rob? Any any time, yeah. Yeah. What what else you feeling? Um, Jerry, have we um. If you go back to the tree, yes. Any of the network encrypt the network traffic? Uh, yeah, we could do that. Let's see what it does. Prevent leaking passwords on network sniffing by encrypting can only be played once. Overall password improvement, you know, like I'm, I'll, yeah, I'm good with that. Yeah. I will say that you typically don't see it internal network uh, encryption. It like it's a control that you obviously can do, but a lot of organizations are like, oh, like it's fine. Uh, well, we you got one more resource. We've had those two guys hanging out in the cloud. Um, oh, hold on. I'm sorry. I made a mistake here. Uh, Alex is correcting me. ICS monitoring is its own action. I thought they meant employed NIDs in the ICS environment. Um, where is it? Oh, right here. So that's two people, two turns, 8,000. And you'll get an extra resource if you want, Rob. I, I, I was mistaken. Okay. Okay. So we have to get rid of one of these. Uh, encrypt network traffic. All right. That's, that's fine. Okay. Sorry, sorry, Rob. Thank you, uh, Alex, for the clarification. All right. So now our resources are locked up for two turns, uh, two two resources, two turns, and one resource, one turn. Let's go ahead and pass the turn. And those guys hanging out in the cloud, do you think we should uh, have create a VPN for them? Uh, it is a good move because if Jeff or Steph um, come on site or they VPN into, you know, the engineering workstation, which is not uncommon. Jeff could be an engineer and he, he doesn't want to come in over the weekend to vent the gas. So he sets up a re remote access and jumps in. So a VPN would, would actually prevent from that attack. Okay. So it's it's pretty good. You want to look at it? Yeah, one person two, it. It's one person, two turns, 5,000. Plenty of money, plenty of resources. Let's do it. All right. I like that move. I like that move. Let's go ahead and pass the turn. Now, how? When? When? We're only still at five percent. Yep. What? What? What are some of the things that kind of make that go up? So, if we have, uh, so okay, so Rob's asking about this threat intelligence score at the top. This score is based on our blue team defenders visibility and awareness of the red team or the threat actor our opponent in this game now if this gets to 100 we win the game and rob's question was how does this thing go up well when there's a compromised asset we can do forensics on it which gives us some value but also and correct me if i'm wrong chat when you have these nids devices right here they will detect and see and, and think of them as like um like like a tripwire with bells on it, right? Like you, you don't know where they are, but you know that they're around and doing stuff. So your threat intelligence score can go up that way as well. Um, NIDs lighting up. Okay, so David E answers the question quite well. NIDs lighting up, which is what I just described. EDR mm -hmm. lighting up, so endpoint detection, and then forensics, um, doing forensics on an endpoint. Okay. So, so these are how you do it, which is, this is a nice breakdown. Very good. Also, oh. if, if we get someone arrested or kicked off site, um, it can go up as well. I, I think the the NIDs in the middle, that needed, I forget if it was a patch update. Uh, AV and patches. Now, if we give that some attention, that might boost up that score. It will not boost up the score, but it would prevent it from being compromised, right? So oh, the threat actor okay. might try to knock it out in order to, to to be stealthy. All right. Well, Jerry, I'd say let's let's um. What what are your thoughts here? I mean, I, 
I, I, I've been I've been ignoring this asset, but installing antivirus is a good move. <laughs> All right, let's do it. Let's do it. All right. Hey, we got four resources now as well. So well done on that. Um, we can do EDR. We can do more. We can add more NIDs. If, if our goal is to get that threat intelligence score up, there's options here. Yeah, let's get the, let's see if we can maybe, I don't know, change our strategy and see if we can start sure. boosting that up. See. All right. Well, then let's 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 put nids in everywhere, right? Because you do it once, and it's good to go for the rest of the for the game. So we'll put it right here, and uh, we'll pass the turn. Let's see. Hello, ITPR guy. Good to see you. VPN installed. Remote access defense. Rob, you are sissoing your face off right now, and I love it. It's good. <laughs> So let's uh, just following your 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 strategy here. We'll install the final nids, okay? And now, um, EDR uh, would be a good one. Or uh, I guess you could do video surveillance, but it's kind of late in the game to do that. We have educated our staff. We could do um, so. This is a long term play, but. You could do security skills training, which is relatively new, but the reason I like it is because you can do threat hunting, which is looking to see if a machine is compromised. And the cool thing is you can do it while you're in incident response, which allows you to completely re utilize all your resources. Okay. So that's that's one potential path for you. Another is to install EDR on all the devices. Let, you know what I mean? Like start working through that. Let's, let's install some EDRs. Oh, hold on one second. Um, we can, I, I'm sorry, uh, Alex Gilwin brings up a good point. We can install log collection analysis, which is basically like EDR. The VPN just showed up this turn, so um, we should we should give it a little love. Okay, okay, good, good call. Okay. Cool. Now, what was your idea, EDR? Yeah, e EDR it up. Okay, so we've got EDR on all the assets. This is missing patches. Um, this is missing patches. All right. Um, this is missing patches. Patches. Um, Shit, Chad. Well, Jerry, maybe we should uh, get the patches. Well, yeah, we could do that. Or I, I was looking for where EDRs are missing. We, we we have all these patches because of the pen test, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Classic pen test report. Patch all your things. So I guess your choice is um, putting EDR on the rest of the devices or starting patching on devices. Oh boy, decisions, decisions. I'd say mm -hmm. let's, you know, actually, I'm feeling the patches. I think. Uh, okay, and what priority do you want to do them in? The um, the top right. Okay. All right, we'll start iterating over that. Hey, no one gets fired for for patching the systems, right? You know what I mean? Like it's not it's not a big deal. All right, guys, IDS sensors installed everywhere. We compromised to detect uh, uh, an asset that's been uh, compromised here. We've detected one. What is it? Oh, Our mail went... server. Now, it is. Uh, it, it does need antivirus set up and patches. Again, I would encourage you, uh, Rob, to, you know, basically treat this, right? So I would do these two things and activate IR, but you'll still have a couple resources left. So we'll, okay. you'd want to max that, max that out. So let's let's do that. Okay, so we are going to activate IR. Well, actually, I guess it's your call, Rob. But do you want to activate IR? Uh, yes. Okay. But well, we have two the resources first. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So okay. we can do EDR. Um, it is interesting that this device got compromised. I'm curious how that got compromised. Honestly, uh, you know, I'm not sure. Where, where would you like to put EDR? We can do it. On... Right, right in that area, yeah. The... Okay, around here? Yeah. All right, so we can do that. And then... Checking, checking, checking. Um. Well, you don't put EDR on server. I mean, on on networking equipment. You do um, log collecting and analysis. So okay. we've got one more here. That's... that's. But... What would you like to do? Let's do the... Um... What's the DCS? What's the server doing? The DC server? Uh, uh, it needs patches. Let's give it a patch. Let's patch. Yeah. Okay, and then we're going to activate IR again. 
We're doing this so the queue resolves in the way we want it so we can be in IR and still get maximum value for our resources. Oh, the email server got fished. Okay. IR mode activated. Very nice. Okay, so we're in IR mode taking um, advantage of these things. We could disconnect the resource from the network and get forensics, which gives us, you know, the highest threat intelligence value. Uh, we could just replace it straight up and get back to business. Uh, and those are our options. Uh, we, we could disconnect or not disconnect. We could gather forensics or not gather forensics. Uh, mm -hmm. And we could clean the asset or we could replace it. I'd say replace it. Okay. Now, we don't have um, threat hunting in place. So you see how we're not going to be able to use these three resources right here, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. So unfortunately, um, the replace an asset's going to take one turn. So I'm going to go ahead and deactivate IR. This is a game mechanic. So it'll replace and then we'll be back into normal operations mode. Okay. Oh, wow. All right. Asset replace. Congratulations. You're looking you great, Rob. Oh, hey, back to normal. We've got another one. Top, top, top. Oh, right. crap. That is not good. Um, That is not good at all. This is really not good. This is an engineer workstation. <laughs> okay. That's a so, cool yeah, they could blow up uh, an HMI next turn. So again, I'd love to, um, I'd love to use all your four resources, um, and then activate IR. All right. Um, I wish we could disconnect this machine, <laughs> but okay. Um, what would you like to do, Rob? I'd say if you can patch up some, some of the devices that you think are most important at this time. Okay. Let's see, there we go. There we go. All right. Um, let's see. Can't really do much else. Oh, uh, here we go. We'll update the firmware. Yeah, we could update the firmware. And uh, let's see. <laughs> Nick Barker, who's also left coast, wants to eat. Yeet the machine. I'll give you a yeet for that one. Yeet. All right. Um, oh, Nick Barker, by the way, there's new yeet emotes in chat. Make sure you see those if you're on the squad. Um, so we're going to patch a bunch of stuff and then activate IR and hope, Rob, I'm hoping for your sake, man. You've been doing great so far. I'm hoping that they don't. Okay. Whoops. Oh. <laughs> Wah, wah, wah. Yeah. And so they damaged your ice. Yeah, they damaged your ICS process. Let's just take a look here really quick. Um, see how they got control of it through the uh, engineering workstation. This is why it's so, so important to protect the engineering workstations. We'll go through it in a minute. But this ABB 1000-3 uh, was fully compromised. And uh, it ended up blowing up the thing. Kind of a worst case scenario for us. Now let's go ahead and look through the log and see what... What red team did? You can see that they're the the background here. They're in the parking lot, Rob. Oh, so you know, Jeremy, I haven't even seen this this um, part of the game where I can see what they did. Oh yeah, it's great. Oh, so really goodness. quickly, when you are here at the end screen, if you click on the results button down at the bottom here, right. you can see your screen, uh, which you're kind of familiar with because you've been looking at it the whole game, and then you can hit view other to see the red team. And this is what I really enjoy doing, Rob, is I scroll down to look at what the red team did and you can see their turn by turn log essentially. So looks like they did some, I'm gonna just kind of give a overview for chat. Um, looks like they did um, some host scanning, some recon. They did physical recon to start getting ready to move on. They tried to recruit some hackers, but they were dissed because they weren't lead enough. They successfully spear fished an asset, which is great. Probably that DMZ database. Uh, the one that we cleaned up earlier in the game. Um, they sniffed network traffic successfully, which means they probably got some passwords and stuff. They ran a social media campaign, um, which is kind of a bummer. And there's that ransomware that we had to clean up. Totally a bummer. Um, they created some malicious USBs, which are only valuable if you go on site, right? Because you need you need people who work there to plug them in. So um, should, we have, should we have 
uh, done done that re um, tool? Should we have implemented that? Well, we could have, but we didn't know what workstation was going to get compromised with the malicious right. USB. It could have, you know, how we had the file server or, or the email server. It could have been that one. Um, really, when when you're dealing with an on-site thing, which is USBs, um, the the security cameras would have been good. I mean, we were talking about security cameras at the beginning, but we chose not to do it. Um, and then we talked about it later, but it was like turn 30 and these malicious USBs were already dropping. Um, you could see Red had a very kind of splintered approach. They were doing um, social media, spear phishing, social engineering type attacks, but also going on site on turn 33. Now they win on turn 38. On turn 33, they make their move onto the perimeter, which is where they're standing at this current time. They throw a couple USBs on the ground. And unfortunately, there is a term for this. Uh, Alex and David will have to remind me, but there is a term for this. Essentially, they dropped a USB drive and Carl happened to be the engineer. So that the end user who operates at this workstation right here picked okay. up that USB drive in the parking lot and like a total donkey came into work, sat down at the engineering workstation and plugged it in, which immediately called back to the threat actor and allowed them to access through proxy, this ABB 100 right here. And ultimately, through the engineering workstation, the um, the criminal detonated the uh, environment. So, so he, he didn't pay attention to his cybersecurity awareness training. No, he absolutely did not. Now, I will say, if we had done deploy USB security on these devices, it would not have hit or it would have uh, had less chance of hitting. But... These are really the only two assets I honestly think you should ever do deploy USB security. And I don't prioritize it that often. Um, so. Well, that anyways. was fun. That was still. That was still very, yeah, it was a good uh, time. Let's yeah. actually just look at how we did, though. We are the blue team. Uh, we did find three issues and, re and, and uh, resolve two of them. Uh, we were still working on that third one when, when the game ended. Um, this is really good, um, Rob. Uh, we discovered, you know, two thirds of all the uh, vulnerabilities in the environment. A lot of turns to remediate it, which isn't great. We did have budget ninety thousand dollars. We spent eighty six thousand. So, you know, even though it sounds counterintuitive, um, CFOs do want you to spend the money that you have. In fact, it's a um, one practice that sounds outrageous, but is true. Is that it's called burning money. And if you're getting to the end of your uh, fiscal year and you still have like, say, say your budget was $100,000 and you only spent $70,000 that year, people like, you know, people like in CISO positions or whatever will literally burn the money. Like they'll contact like a pen testing company. And they'll be like, hey, can you do a pen test? Like it's November uh, 9th right now. I'll be like, can you do a pen test before December 31st? And like mm -hmm. we're really booked. I'm like, I need you to do it. And they're like, all right, we'll fit you in. How much? And I'll be like, they'll be like, they'll say it's fifteen thousand dollars, and I'll be like, how about I buy two from you? You bill me thirty grand today, and we'll we'll do it next year. And they're like, okay, done, right? Because obviously they want the cash money. But for me, I want to burn my whole budget because if I don't burn my budget when I go back to the CFO next year for budget, they're like, why do you need a hundred thousand dollars? You asked for a hundred thousand last year, and you only spent seventy. You're only gonna get seventy this year. It, right so so that is a, a a weird reality that we have to deal with in um in you know whatever corporate america um just a final uh run through here our threat intelligence score was 15 percent. staff utilization 96 percent. we got a little toasted on uh incident response i think uh but overall great great job rob um really really um uh, you know, please, we didn't get you the win today, but I feel like right, I, um, trying. we did We did all right. We did all right. I, so, I think, Rob, yeah, any thoughts, final thoughts around gameplay? I was going to say, or, I, think, I, think Clint, I think Clint heard you say how you don't usually prioritize the USB drop, and he did something on the back end. Yeah, yeah, he's back there, uh, you know, on the keyboards, no. tickling them. No, but yeah. this is, this, I think this, this game is definitely... Um, you know, no matter what level of cyber you are, infosec you're in, it's this. There's, there's so much you can gain from what you could have done, how to do it, and what each each of the uh, resources mean. And so I, I've I've enjoyed playing it so far. It's been it's been fun. 
Oh, great. Well, I, I'm, I really appreciate you, Rob, uh, volunteering to come on, to be on stream. It's not it's not easy thing to, to be live on stream, so I genuinely appreciate it. Uh, well played. Gail Salins asks if this this video, this experience will be live on replay. It will be, Gail. You'll be able to watch it on ThreatGen's YouTube channel uh, or Simply Cyber's YouTube channel, but uh, I encourage you, uh, check it out on either of those platforms. Rob did a fantastic job. We did explain a lot of decision making uh so there's value from a information security practitioner perspective as well as a gameplay uh perspective so in the that, guys in the chat as well very helpful oh yeah yeah alex and david are professional services consultants uh d e consulting i love it i mean not not d e uh d a uh consulting dna that's pretty good i will call it that all right. Well, thanks so much uh, to Rob Brown for being our guest player today. Uh, I'm Gerald Lozier. He's Rob Brown. Next week, we'll be doing another Let's Play at 1130 a.m. Eastern time. So definitely hit the bell for notifications if you want to be reminded when we go live or just put a note in your calendar for Wednesdays at 1130 a.m. Clint Bow Dungeon will be back uh, for next week. So he'll be back in the saddle with the hat. Uh, and we'll have a great stream for you with the the gameplay to be determined. So stay tuned to the Discord server or to the social medias and we'll let you know how it goes. Thanks everybody. And until next time, we'll see you.